G'day everyone, welcome to the first of your online tutorials for Math 2A89. This week we're focusing on systems of linear equations. Uh, we're following on from the end of week four when we looked at iterative methods, uh, where we did the Jacobi iteration method. Um, this week we're focusing on explicit methods. So in question three we'll be looking at gas elimination, gas elimination with pivoting, and gas Jordan elimination. In question four and five, we're going to be looking at LU decomposition. Uh, in question four, looking at the Doolittle decomposition. And in question five, Kraut decomposition. So, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to kick things off with gas elimination. Uh, gas elimination you would have seen in first year maths already. We start off by transforming our system of linear equations into an augmented matrix. Then using forward elimination, we'll simplify those equations and backward substitution will, um, will solve for those simplified equations. Okay. So in question three, we're given um, three different equations with three variables to solve for. So we'll start off by putting that into an augmented matrix. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. All of the numbers on the left-hand side go into the left-hand matrix, side of the matrix. And all of the numbers on the right-hand side go into the right-hand side of the matrix. So our first row will be 1, 1, negative 1, negative 3. Second row, 6, 2, 2, 2. Third row, negative 3, 4, 1, one. Now forward elimination, um, our goal with this is to set the bottom left corner of the matrix to zero. So these three elements for this equation, for this matrix, we want those to be zero. To get there we're going to use row manipulation to move around the rows um, and we have two rules that we can use. The first one is that any row can be multiplied by a non-zero scalar. So I can multiply the first row by 3, I can divide the second row by 2, I can multiply the third row by 7 on 5 if I wanted to. And the second rule is that any row can be added to another row. So I can add row 1 to row 2, I can subtract row 3 from row 1 um, if I choose. So let's get started. So, first step I'm going to, for row 2, I'm going to take away 6 of row 1. In row 3, I'm going to add 3 of row 1. So the first row is going to remain unchanged. Second row, we're going to be left with 0, negative 4, 8, and 20. Now third row, we're going to be left with 0, 7, negative 2, and negative 8. So, as you can see, we've just gotten rid of uh, two of our elements, and we just have one more to go. So here we're going to say R3 is equal to R3 plus 7 on 4 times row 2. Okay. So again, our first row and our second row now will remain unchanged. So we'll have 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 3, 0, negative 4, 8, 20, and 0, 0, 12, 27. So what we have here is what we call an upper triangular matrix.
Moving on to backward substitution. Um, from row 3 we get 12x3 is equal to 27. Solving for x3 gives us x3 equals 2.25. From row 2 we have negative 4x2 plus 8x3 is equal to 20. So solving for x2 gives us negative 1 and 4 outside of 20 minus 8 times 2.25 which equals negative 0 0.5 and row 3 gives us x1 plus x2 minus x3 equals negative 3 so solving for x1 Yes, x1 equals negative 3 minus 0 point, negative 0 0.5 plus 2.25, which equals negative 0 0.25. Okay. Okay, so when we introduce pivoting into gas elimination, our steps remain unchanged. So we still get the system of linear equations, we transform that into our augmented matrix, we perform forward elimination to simplify those equations, and then we use backward substitution to uh, solve those equations. One of the difference is, is that in our forward elimination, we introduce another rule. And that rule is that the position of any two rows can be interchanged. So I can swap rows 3 and row 1, I can swap row 1 and row 2, etc, etc. So when I solve this time, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap rows 1 and row 2. So our third row has remained unchanged, and our first and second row have switched. Now I'm going to divide row 1 by 2. So rows 2 and 3 remain unchanged. Um, now I'm going to subtract uh, row 1 from 3 times row 2. And row 3, I'm going to add row 1 onto that. That will leave the top row unchanged. Second row I'll have 0, 2, negative 4, and negative 10. And in row 3 I'll have 0, 5, 2, and 2. And so finally, for forward elimination, I'm going to Take away 5 on 2 times row 2 from row 3. So we're left with 3, 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, negative 4, negative 10. So those are the first two rows as before, and 0, 0, 12, and 27 in our last row. So then backward substitution is the same as before. We have 12x3 is equal to 27. 
Solving that gives us x3 is equal to 2.25. We have 2x2 two minus 4x3 is equal to negative 10. Solving that gives us x2 is equal to negative 0 0.5. And finally, our first row gives us 3x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 1. And solving that gives us x1 is equal to negative 0.25. So as before, we have x3 is equal to 2.25, x2 is equal to negative 0 0.5, and x1 is equal to negative 0 0.25. So Gauss-Jordan elimination follows quite a similar process to Gaussian elimination. Um, the difference is in the forward elimination step. Uh, so in Gaussian elimination, we were trying to get an upper triangular matrix. So we we're trying to get rid of these bottom left-hand corner terms. So we we're trying to set them equal to zero. But with Gauss-Jordan elimination, we're going an extra step. So we're getting rid of the top corner and we're setting all of the diagonal terms equal to 1. So we're basically getting an identity matrix on the left hand side of this augmented matrix. To do that um, in the forward elimination step, there's, we alternate between normalizing the row and then eliminating the rest of the numbers in that column. So for example, we'll start with row 1, we'll normalize everything so that the first, the diagonal term row 1 is equal to 1, then we'll eliminate the rest of the numbers in that column, move on to row 2, normalize everything so that the diagonal term is equal to 1, and do the same thing, eliminate the rest of the numbers in that column. So let's get started. We'll simpl start by Simply simplifying um, row two so that it's uh, all so that it's so we're going to divide by two for row two and rows one and three remain unchanged. Um, next step, we're going to we don't need to normalize row one as it's normalized already. So we're going to move on to our elimination phase for row 1, where we'll get rid of this 6 and this negative 3. So we'll do row 2 minus 3 row 1, and row 3 will be equal to row 3 plus 3 row 1. So our first row will be unchanged, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 3. Our second row will be 0, negative 2, negative, uh, positive 4, sorry, and 10. And our third row will be 0, 7, negative 2, and negative 8. Okay. And we'll move on to our normalization stage for row 2. So we'll divide that row by negative 2. So row 1 is unchanged, row 2 will be 0, 1, negative 2, negative 5 and row 3 will be unchanged. Okay. Um, next step is elimination. So we're going to get rid of these two numbers here, the 1 and the 7. So we'll do row 1 equals row 1 minus row 2. We'll do uh, row 3 equals row 3 minus 7 row 2. Okay. So our row 1 will be 1, 0, 1, 
2. Our row 2 will be unchanged. And row 3 will be 0, 0, 12, and 27. And we move on to our normalization stage for row 3. So row 3 will divide everything by 12. So we have 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, negative 2, negative 5, and 0, 0, 1, and 2.25. And then finally we move on to our elimination stage for row 3. So we'll do row 1 equals row 1 minus row 3. And row 2 is equal to row 2 plus 2 row 3. And we'll get 1, 0, 0, negative 0 0.25 in row 1. Get 0, 1, 0, negative 0 0.5 zero zero one and two point two five so the advantage of getting it into this identity matrix means we can just read off exactly what the final answer is for each of our x's so x1 is equal to negative zero point two five x2 is equal to negative zero point five and x3 is equal to 2.25. So to summarise question 3, we use three different methods to solve a system of linear equations. First one was gas elimination, where our goal was to get an upper triangular matrix, as you see here, um, by multiplying each row by a non-zero scalar and adding and subtracting different rows. Um, in Gauss elimination with pivoting, we had the same goal, but we added an extra rule where we could interchange two different rows. And finally, with Gauss-Jordan elimination, our goal was actually to get an identity matrix on the left-hand side of the augmented matrix. And we did this in forward elimination by using alternating between normalizing the diagonal term in, in the row and eliminating the uh, other terms, other elements in that column. So the method we'll be using for the next couple of questions is called LU decomposition. With LU decomposition, we split um, the square matrix A into the product of a lower tr uh, triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix. If you remember from the previous question, an upper triangular matrix is uh, a matrix in which all of the upper right corner elements are filled, and the lower triangular matrix is when the lower left corner elements are filled. So if we take um, our augmented matrix A, A times X equals B. Okay. Um, if we substitute in L and U, we get L times U times X equals B. Now here what we're going to do is we're going to let u multiplied by x equal another vector term we're going to call d. Okay. So substituting this back in we get l times d is equal to B. Okay, so from A we can determine L and U. We're already given B. 
So with L and B we can determine D and using that we can determine X. Now with LU decomposition there are two different methods. There's Doolittle and the Kraut decomposition. So with Doolittle decomposition all of the diagonal terms in your lower triangular matrix are equal to 1, so these ones here. And with Kraut decomposition, all of the diagonal terms in your upper triangular matrix are equal to 1, these ones here. So in question 4, we're using the Doolittle decomposition method. Uh, first step is to use Gauss elimination to determine our U matrix. Uh, through that we'll then determine our L matrix as well. Um, we'll use L and B to determine our D. And then finally we'll solve for X using our that D matrix that we just found and U. So question four, we get given our A matrix, our augmented matrix. Um, so our first step is to perform Gauss elimination. Firstly, we'll do R2 equals R2 minus 0.5 on 0.3 R1 and R3 equals R3 minus 0.1 on 0.3 R1. Okay. So first row remains unchanged. Second row will be 0, 0 0.133, 0 0.233, and 0 0.6867. And our third row will be 0, 0 0.1267, 0 0.1667. And negative zero point four three six seven. And then finally we'll do row three minus equals row three minus zero point one two six seven over. 0.133 R2. And we'll be left with 0 0.3, 0 0.52, 1, negative 0 0.01, as before. 0, 0 0.133, 0 0.233, and 0 0.6867, as before. Finally, you have zero, zero, negative zero point zero five five, and negative one point oh eight nine. So this is our U matrix. For our L matrix, uh, we get the terms from our Gauss elimination steps. So A21 and A11 are the original A2 and A21 and A11 terms in our matrix. So this one and this one. So we'll have 1, 0, 0. 0 0.5 over 0 0.3, 1, 0. A31, A11, so that's A31 here, A11 there. So 0 0.1 over 0 
3. And A32 and A22, they come from this step here. So A32 will be this element and A22 this element. So 0 0.1267 over 0 0.133. So if we solve that, we get 1, 0, 0. So our next step is then to solve for D. So remember our formula is L times X. Sorry. L times D equals B. Okay. So we put that in our augmented matrix. forward substitution you can then determine each of the values for D. So if you do that you would get negative 0.01, 0 0.68, 0 0.6867 and negative 1.098. So that's D. And then our formula for u for x is u times x, sorry, u times d, sorry, u times x is equal to d. So with our augmented matrix, we'll have 0 0.3, 0 0.521. Our value from D is negative 0 0.01. 0, negative 0 0.133, 0 0.233, and 0 0.6867, and 0, 0, 0 0.05. Negative 0 0.05, sorry. And negative 1.098. And again, if we use back substitution here, we'll get our answer for x, which is negative 14.90, negative 29.4. Nine, sorry, point five zero and nineteen point eight zero. So in question five, we're using crab decomposition to solve the system of linear equations. Uh, it's very similar to do little decomposition. Um, but at the start, we're determining L and U by comparing coefficients. Um, from when we get L and U, like do a little decomposition, we'll then solve for D and X by the same method. Um, so in question five, we're giving, given this set of equations and we're asked to solve them. So what we do with crap decomposition is that we expand 
um, L and U. So we know that U is, is the diagonal terms are equal to 1. Um, so when we expand it, we get um, this matrix here. We also know that A, our A matrix is equal to um, 7, 2, negative 3, 2, 5, negative 3, and 1, negative 1, negative 6. And that's straight from our system of linear equations up here. Um, we know that each element in these matrix is going to be the same. So L11 is going to be 7. L11 times U12 is going to be equal to 2. And we can use this to determine our L and U matrix. So we'll start with the easy, easy terms. Um, the left hand side of the matrix we can just read off. So L11 is equal to 7. L21 uh, is equal to 2. And L31 is equal to 1. We'll then move on to U12 and U13. So U12 is equal to A12 on L11. So it's equal to 2 over 7. And U13 is equal to A13 on L11. So that'll be negative 3 over 7. L22 is equal to A22, which was 5, minus L21, which is 2, times U12. So minus 2 times 2 on 7, which is equal to Thirty-one on seven. L three two is equal to A three two, which we can see is negative one minus L three one, which we found was one times U one two, which we found is two on seven. So L three two then equal to negative 9 on 7. U23 is equal to A23, which is negative 3, minus L21, which we found to be 2, times U13, found to be negative 3 on 7. All divided by L22, which we determined to be 31 on 7. And that comes to negative 15 over 31. And finally, L33 is equal to A33, so negative 6. Minus L31, which is L31, 1, times U13, negative 3 on 7, minus L32, negative 9 on 7, times U23, negative 15 on 31. And that's all equal to negative 192 on 31. So our L and U matrices then are 7, 0, 0, 2, 31, 7, 7, sorry. Two is 
zero. And one, negative nine on seven, negative 192 on 31. So that's our L matrix and our U matrix. We have one, two on seven, negative three on seven, zero, one, and negative 15 on 31, zero, zero, one. Now I won't go through solving for D and X again, but for you to check, D was equal to negative 1.714, negative 3.742, and 4.698. equal to 0 0.7188, negative 1.4688, and 4.6979. Okay, so to summarize LU decomposition, in the Doolittle decomposition method, uh, the lower triangular matrix, the diagonals of the lower triangular matrix are all equal to one, as opposed to in the crap decomposition method where the diagonals in the upper triangular matrix are all one. Um, in the Doolittle decomposition, we use Gauss elimination to determine L and U. And in crowd decomposition, we use comparing coefficients to determine L and U. After that, the methods are the same. We solve for D um, in this equation, L times D equals B. And then we solve for X in the equation, U times X equals B. So that's all for this week. Um, next week, week seven your week five labs are due please remember to submit it at least 30 minutes before your designated lab time um, remember to include your script your .m file your hand calculations and a document explaining your answers um, thanks everyone for your understanding and adaptability during this time stay healthy and if you have any questions just post on the Moodle forums and our tutors will get back to you